<laughs> I hope you can uh, hear me. Anyway, after Sylvia, music and uh, talking principle or uh, walking uh, pencil, you have me. I'm not a funny guy, but I'm a prosecutor like he said, you know. So laugh a little and impress the crowd, otherwise you'll be prosecuted. <laughs> uh, what I'm going to talk to you about, okay, when, when Hari came and met me some time back, he said to talk about myself, and you know, I hate talking about myself. And then he said, you know, we negotiated a little bit. He said, talk about something that you are passionate about. So I said, okay, fine. You know, I mean, I'm really passionate about sustainable development. Sustainable development is a, you know, a buzzword, and we started the session with buzzword, so I think it's very appropriate to talk about it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave out all the legal jargon, right? I have only 18 weeks I have been told. I'll try to stick to the time frame, and I'll just, uh, you know, throw some ideas at you. And perhaps you might not laugh. But hopefully, uh, hopefully, if I can, uh, you know, get you to start thinking about certain things, then I think I have achieved my purpose. So, let me start by, you know, sharing some uh, ideas about uh, why we have a role to play in sustainable development. The reason for that is, uh, in my view, uh, in the age that we live, is one of the most important concepts, but also having said that, it's one of the most misunderstood concepts. If you just do a general web search on, on the word sustainable development, you'll come across about 35 million hits. And if you go to these web, search, uh, web pages and see how they define sustainable development, you'll find you know, various definitions. And then when you speak to people, most people say they know what sustainable development is, few people understand what it is, and a lot of others you know, don't know what it really means. So as far as uh, we all are concerned, I think we all have a journey to complete. And in this journey, it's important for us to come across what sustainable development is and do our own thing. As for me, right, I'm halfway through my journey. And there are some of you, perhaps, who have, you know, way ahead of me. And some of you may be just beginning it. But what is important to understand is we are here today. And tomorrow we may not be here. And someone else, you know, will take our place. So the question is, are we supposed to leave a legacy for them? In my view, that is what sustainable development means. So this is what I told you earlier. Approximately 35,300,000 web pages talking about sustainable development. You can do your own Google search and see whether you agree with the definitions that they have given. Now the idea is, imagine you live in a beautiful apartment like this. I'm sorry the picture is not very clear. Swimming pool, you know beautiful countryside, you know, and you have a fantastic view and so on. Do you consider yourself to be living in a sustainable environment? You may be living in an economically sustainable environment, but what if the money to finance your lifestyle here comes from running an industry like this? Then does it, you know, make you a person who is living in a sustainable environment? Now look at this. This actual slide was inspired by a visit I made to India a couple of years ago when I became an academic after leaving the UN. And I was with this German uh, scholar, and we went to a very rural area in India. And he was trying to convince a gathering of farmers, saying that, guys, the way you live is sustainable. Don't make the same mistake that we made. And that guy nearly got stoned. <laughs> the reason for that is, imagine the plight of a farmer like this. Yes, he lived in a beautiful environment. Everything is green. But his dream is to make sure that his children study and become big time corporate executives. And you get guys like that coming and telling guys like him, right, don't you know, walk our path. We have made a mistake. That's not going to work. And look at this. How do we deal with the concept of sustainable development? The reason why I say it's misunderstood is because it means different things to different people. Now we come across you know, people like this gentleman in most developed countries. For them, sustainable development is not finding a solution for poverty, but hiding poverty or getting rid of it. They don't want to see it around, right? And they think if you can do that, that's sustainable development. On the other hand, look at this poor family from Bangladesh. The most valuable position they have is the water bucket and the dog. And they basically lose their temporary you know, housing facility that they have three times a year because of floods, right? What would sustainable development mean to them? 
try going and talking to them about Kyoto Protocol and you know, uh, greening the environment doesn't make any sense to them. What about this? I don't know whether you knew this, but we have approximately 15.2 million refugees in the world. About 11 million of them are in the Middle East. And 6 million of them are in Gaza and around there where I used to work you know, for part of my life when I was in the UN. You can add to this figure of 15.2 million. These are people who actually live outside their country of origin. But if you consider the internally displaced people, that's about 27 million and put together, we have about approximately 43 million refugees in the world. What would sustainable development mean to them? Is it economic sustainability? Is it environmental sustainability? Or ju they just want a home or a state to call their own? And look at this kid who lost his entire family and the village as a result of tsunami. What does sustainable development mean to him? What about this father who lost his entire family, including the, the, uh, the youngest daughter whom he's carrying now? And there's a big story behind it. I have no time to go into that. But this is a man who lost his entire village as a result of a civil strife because of air strikes. I don't want to mention the place, but what would sustainable development mean to him? And look at this old lady. She was born as a refugee. Now she is, uh, when this picture was taken, she was about 66 years old, and she was still a refugee. And this is the third time the UN built accommodation that was given to her has been bombed. And on this occasion, in a little house, there were 14 members of the same family living, and she is the sole survivor. So what does sustainable development mean to her? So in this background, how do we define sustainable development? The concept of sustainable development, if you go by the legal definitions you can find, came into mainstream international politics only in the year 1987, when the World Commission on Environment and Development you know, tried to define it. Now, even that definition is misquoted sometimes, and I will prove it you know, as we go on. So this is the definition that was given by the, uh, the World Commission on Environment and Development in 1987. And it says, sustainable development is that which meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Do you agree? Is this a good definition of sustainable development? Even if it is, did we have to wait till 1987 to understand? Not at all. Because this concept has been there, right, for centuries. Look at this old uh, quote from, you know, one of the uh, 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 North American tribes, uh, Red Indian tribes, people of the Long House. And this is what they say. Think not of yourself, O chief. Know your own generation. Think of continuing generations of our families. Think of our grandchildren and of those yet unborn, whose faces are coming from beneath the ground. So this has been with the indigenous tribe for centuries, long before the UN Commission you know, came up with this definition. So can we say that you know, we did not do anything about sustainable development because we did not know of the concept? I don't think so. A old Kenyan proverb, which has been passed down generation to generation for centuries, see what that says. Treat the earth well. It's not inherited from your parents. It is borrowed from your children. So in my view, if there is copyright, what the World Commission you know, reproduced is a very old version of sustainable development that has been around and people have known about it. Unfortunately, we have not acted upon it. But that's a different issue. But why I say the concept of sustainable development or even the definition we have is being misquoted is for this reason. The fact that you have to save the world for the future, the, the first part of the definition I showed you is what everybody loves to quote. But a lot of people ignore this aspect. Because in the World Commission report itself, they go on to explain what sustainable development means. They say it contains within it two key concepts. The concept of needs, in particular, the essential needs of the world's poor, to which overriding priority should be given. And then it talks about the harm we have done to the environment as a result of technological development and so on. So depending on which side of the world you come from, right, which country you belong to, your overriding priority should be either eradication of poverty and in the meantime, you know, trying to control technological development.
but there are a lot of conflicts when you try to deal with it. Because without technology, you can't develop your economies. And if you develop your economies, you cause environmental harm. And then if you want to strike a right balance, the rich countries have to help poor countries. But do they actually help? Right? Do your own research on that. All what you need to do is do a search on the foreign direct investment flows in the world, FDI inflows. And you will find out that 70% of the foreign direct investment inflows goes from developed countries to other developed countries. So only 30% actually goes to developing countries. And if you take this 30%, you put India and China together, somebody would argue that that's 50% of the world population, fine, but we have 150 developing countries in the world. So India and China put together, out of that 50%, they get 30%. And then you put, you know, few rapidly developing countries like South Africa, Mexico, Brazil, you put them together, seven countries share almost 39% of the balance, you know, the, the uh, portion of FDI inflows. The least developed countries, about 40 in the world, get only 1%. So what does that show? The concept of sustainable development is there. Even if we understand it, we actually don't help the poor. So eradication of poverty has not attracted you know, sufficient uh, uh, implementation mechanisms from, you know, different parts of the world. The reason for that is perhaps the people who want to invest, you know, follow larger markets and, you know, where they can make profit. So profitability is what governs, you know, the action. So what is sustainable development then? Now, United Nations in the year 2005 tried to define it by saying that it's a little bit of social development, a little bit of economic development, a little bit of environmental development, and you can make sure that you know, all three are bearable, equitable, and viable, then you have sustainable development. Very easy to say, but difficult to achieve, right? And then the indigenous communities have been arguing for centuries, saying that, no, this is not sustainable development. This alone is not enough. You have to also take cultural diversity right, into the equation. And I totally agree with that point of view. These are some of the challenges I said as to why you know, it's very difficult to reach, uh, achieve sustainable development. If you take the UN system, approximately 199 countries are there in the system now. And out of the 199, about 150 are considered to be developing. But you look at the, uh, the way the world resources are being used. The developing world has 80% of the world population but consumes only 20% of the resources. Whereas the developed world has 20% of the world population, consumes 80% of the resources. And then these guys go and tell these guys that the way you live is sustainable, <laughs> right? And then the resource crunch, energy is running out, water is running out, and then we have issue of striking a balance between competing challenges, everybody talking about climate change, and you know, uh, emitting greenhouses, gases is bad, you need to control it. But that causes problem because for a developing country, cheap technology is what they require in order to develop their economy. So cheap technology might not be environmentally friendly always. And if you look at the research and development that is going into nowadays, you know, for developing green economies, we are talking about, like this, what, this is called the water lily, we are talking about building eco-cities as the solution, right? And I think these guys have got it completely wrong. The reason is, we can start talking about eco-cities, you can think about, the, you know, imagine the investment that should go into developing something like this. And then what do we do with this? Can you imagine the cost of, you know, transforming these people who live in these conditions into that kind, that kind of futuristic cities? Who is going to pick up the bill? Should not sustainable development be for everybody? And if you go and walk around in Asia, this is actually a picture from India, and uh, you can see this, you know, in, in all parts of the world, and you will see these huge, fantastic apartment complexes coming up, and, you know, probably how providing fancy apartments for about, you know, 300 uh, people or 300 families, and right opposite that you will have perhaps 300,000 slums. So my request to you is, do what you can to make sure that we do not forget people like this. Because they also are, they should be the key beneficiaries of whatever we do in connection with sustainable development. And let us hope that the future global negotiations on sustainable development will not end up like this. This is the actual picture from the Copenhagen negotiations, you know, concerning the Kyoto Protocol. And you know what happened. 
the global negotiations are supposed to be like this. And how did the Copenhagen Accord, you know, came about? A bunch of them met in a back room, and a second meeting took place, and they had an accord. So where is universal participation? Right? So if you allow only a few players in global politics to decide what sustainable development is and how the world should go forward, we are completely getting it wrong. So I will end by saying that, you know, it is our responsibility for saving the planet. And I want to share this quote from, you know, Mahatma Gandhi, who said that our world has enough for each person's need, but not for his greed. So I'm doing my own thing, and I hope all of you can join in and do your own thing to make the world a better place. Thank you.